One of the trickiest aspects of the hospital waiting list crisis is the number of people in hospital who, frankly, simply shouldn't be there. Uh, they become bed blockers, and they include people who are well enough to be discharged post their treatment, post the rest of it, if only they could then get the care support that they need out in the community. Now, that's been recognised by the Prime Minister, by the Secretary of State for Health, Steve Barclay, and pretty well everybody else in the industry. But they also include people, believe it or not, like children, increasingly with acute dental problems. To discuss this, I'm delighted to be joined now by uh, Dr Nilesh Parma, an award-winning dental surgeon. Uh, when I was told these statistics, uh, I was absolutely flabbergasted. Uh, these are kids whose dental problems are so severe, and you're listening to someone who can remember being lined up with everybody else at school, having the dental checks and uh, fillings done and all the rest of it. Is it simply that that's gone out of the window and the problems are so profound that for the child's safety, he or she has to go into hospital? Alistair, thank you very much for having me on and spotlighting this really um, tragic statistic that came out this week. So the, the main um, reason for children between the ages of five to nine to be admitted to hospital because of dental problems. Wow. Um, and as, as you mentioned, um, many years ago, you'd have a, a school dentist who would come along and inspect everyone's teeth. Um, that simply doesn't exist anymore. Um, we've seen a huge increase in tooth decay for children. And as you can understand, children are very difficult to treat for dentists. It's hard enough treating a phobic adult. Trying to place a good quality filling in a young child is something which is very tricky and requires a lot of time. Um, it's something which has been getting worse and worse, which has been highlighted by the British Dental Association for many, many years now. The, one of the things that the British Dental Association have made crystal clear uh, time and time and time again, and, and lots and lots of people listening to the conversation will know it all too well, uh, that to, I mean, to get to a GP is one thing, but to get to an NHS dentist uh, is increasingly difficult because there simply aren't that many there. But a lot of people listening to our chat will say, hang on a minute, this is just about brushing your teeth when you get up in the morning, even if you're a nipper, and brushing them before you go to bed at night, eating fewer sweets and sugary products and all the rest of it. I mean, personal responsibility and parental responsibility is a key part of this as well, isn't it? Yes, Alice, that's absolutely spot on. Um, so the government, dentists, we can only do so much. But um, as one colleague of mine puts it, he goes, if the sugary food isn't in the house, that five to nine year old is not going to get hold of it. Um, there needs to be parental responsibility in terms of what food the children eat, what their attitude is to brushing their teeth, and are they supervised when they brush their teeth? It's not good enough just sending the kids off to brush their teeth. You need to watch them do it. Um, I had a quick look today as to how much a kid's toothbrush is, and you can get a very good kid's toothbrush for two pounds, and you can actually get kids' toothpaste for one pound. So for three pounds, that would cover you for about three months' worth of oral health care, minimum oral health care for a child. So there does need to be parental accountability for this. Absolutely. And, and I know from our own experience as parents, you, you can you know, tooth brushes and toothpaste as well that perhaps play to your favourite cartoon character or um, the Avengers or whatever it might be. Uh, at least that bit of the industry is trying to make it a bit more fun than it used to be perhaps when you and I were nippers. Correct. Yeah, there's, there's so much online, which many of the toothpaste providers, the um, uh, toothbrush manufacturers have got free resources. They're pushing this to try and help parents learn how to brush their teeth properly and then disseminate that information to their children. There's so much out there for free. Um, and most dental practices, we have so many toothpaste samples come in and see us. We're more than happy to give them to children, especially yeah. to try and make it a fun and enjoyable thing. Because if you if you have to remember that if a young child has to be has to go under general anesthesia to have their teeth taken out, it's very traumatic for them. They wake up, they hardly have any teeth. And then you're putting them down a spiral path of becoming very nervous patients who will avoid seeing the dentist and then having more problems later on in life. So it's something we really need to work on when our patients are young and when the kids are young.